Russo'sBrand.com, where the pros are the pros. What's next, Jeff? Well, we know the Mr. McMahon documentary is coming up on Netflix, and Russell Nomics has learned that there's going to be a disclaimer put at the beginning of the first episode of the series to let the audience know that most of the interviews in the show took place before the Janelle Grant lawsuit was filed. They're saying WWE sources noted that this is a way to take the heat away from any of the major names, some of which are still employed by WWE, who may have had good things to say about Vince McMahon. Fightful is claiming that a spokesperson for Janelle Grant reached out to them to say that Netflix documentary group made an initial outreach to Janelle's representation for an interview for this project. Despite this, no such interview came to fruition. Man, and that that case is still, that's going to take a couple years, if not several, to, to settle. Yeah. I mean, that is really going, that is such a big, a deep hole that, it's going to take a long time for that to, to fully be closed out. But but now th- that that's interesting because by the time we get to the end of this documentary, and if we start getting into the Janelle uh, Grant case, and if it starts really getting dark and ugly, yeah. and earlier on in the episodes, you know, you've got the John Cena's and the Undertakers, and who knows who who knows who else of the world putting this guy over with flying colors. How do you think disclaimer or no disclaimer? How do you think that's going to make them look by the end of this documentary when he's, he's going to be painted in a very different picture? Well, it's going to be hard. I mean, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to, you know, judge those guys, you know, and judge them harshly, but let's face it. I'm sure they're, I, I what's the st- statistic that you, the average person, uh, walk by or know, you know to some way, and even if it's peripherally, uh, a pedophile, a murderer, or a rapist, serial killer or rapist, in your circle, the potential is there to know one of those, if not all three. You don't know it. So are you now held accountable for their behavior and actions because at one point in time you spoke well of them in your social circle, but you didn't know them. You didn't know all you knew was your interaction with them. And that was it. You never knew the other side. Mm -hmm. And that's the case with Vince. These people have obviously had relationships with Vince McMahon, direct personal relationships. How could they be held accountable for not knowing another side of this man, another part of him that he never exhibited? to anyone else. I don't I don't think that's very fair. Now you're going to demonize a John Cena or an Undertaker or The Rock or Steve Austin for their perception of one side of of this person. Yeah. Know? But but the the everyone I, I, has yeah. everyone has three lives. Yeah. Everyone ha- no matter who you are, you have three lives. You have a you have a public life. You have a personal life, and then you have a private one. And no one knows all three. No one does. Only one person knows that, and that's you. So I I could have right now, if somebody were to ask me about Vince Russo, granted, I would bury you so much. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) but if someone asked me about Vince Russo, like I find out tomorrow, not that it's going to happen, but I find out tomorrow you're a serial killer, which wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you live up in Colorado. There are a lot of places to hide bodies. I mean, you probably have a cabin that you go out in the woods anyway and shit in a coffee can and write your manifesto. Um, <laughs> no, nobody's heard from EC3 since yesterday when he was nobody's there. Nobody's heard yeah. from EC3 since yesterday. Yeah. But in all seriousness, though, I I don't know that guy. I don't know no, that. Absolutely. No, I'm, I know, I, but, right. Yeah. I know the Vince Russo. Yeah. So if somebody were to ask me about Vince Russo, yeah. they were interviewing me, I'd I'd put you over with flying colors. And then a week later, I find out Vince Russo is this degenerate that takes people in the woods and hunts them. I I would be like, what? But now if they air that interview during the story of you hunting people, I look like a piece of shit, you know, because now I'm lauding you with praise. And then everybody goes, oh, how dare he? 
this guy was a horrible human being. I didn't meet the horrible human being. But none of us met that guy. Let's face it. That's what happened with around, that. That's, that you that's, were around Vince more than anyone. Yeah. You didn't meet yeah. that guy, did you? No. No, no, that, that was the case. That too. That, that's exactly what happened with, like with a Harvey Weinstein. You know, there's there's pictures of Weinstein with everybody. And then right. all of a sudden this news comes out and you can you can't judge. And it, it's going to happen that people with a knee jerk reaction because they just are only going to see what's put in front of them. are going to yeah. go, how dare I used to like that guy. And now he's he's praising a degenerate like Vince McMahon. That wasn't the guy that the, that you met. Yeah. I met this guy. I didn't meet that guy. This is if anybody watched Master Shoot Theater, Vince, the spot that Stevie Richards was telling you about that he hasn't seen in thirty years in the business. Yeah, re- yeah. this this is that spot. Is, okay. it, it, it's yeah. not it's not done well. Trust me, it's not done well. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. What? Well, how can you allow that? See, in all honesty. Did you have you ever seen it that bad? I've never seen movie? that. I've never seen anything close to that. What what is the ref doing there for the like is he telling him kick out now? Is he pushing yeah. him to kick out? Like what, yeah. what what is he doing? He's he's making sure that a guy kicks out because he knows. I don't know why or where this started, where the ref needs to know exactly what the finish is. I don't understand why he needs to know exactly what the finish is. That's none of his business. All his job is, is to count three. And if it's not the finish and the guy doesn't kick out, you count three. Yep. Nothing. I don't care how bad you perform. Nothing ruins the work that you're trying to perpetrate on an audience more than the ref not counting three when he should count three. That exposes the lie more than anything else. And that right there, that one, two, let me slap the leg of the guy so that it'll kick out. Absurd. The ref, no ref, That ref should be fired. No excuse. Should be fired. And if he wasn't fired, that's appalling. Would you believe Jimmy Corderas? Uh, I was, you know, just following this on Twitter. Like he was, he was beside himself, just insulted, oh, sure. flabbergasted, and got totally attacked by the AEW fan base. Of course, <laughs> because they don't, they're fans. They don't know. That is the worst sin that anyone in the ring in front of an audience can commit is a referee not counting three when he yeah. should. Simple as that. And, I don't care what any referee says. I don't care where who they are. It, I, we never walked around and told the referee, hey, here's ex- here's the finish. We just went out there, and the referee goes out, counts, and, and that's it. If you don't kick out, that's on you. Yeah. You know, that yeah. referee doesn't need to know the finish. Yeah. That referee, if unless the referee is getting bumped or is involved in some direct fashion in the finish, that referee doesn't need to know anything. Dick Gorley didn't know the finish. <laughs> 